The other day I came across this video on the internet and I don't know where it comes from. I don't know what this is called or if it exists outside of this one instance. I've tried to search for the origin of it. I've tried to reverse image search frames of the video. I truly have no idea what the story is other than this pixelated mess of pixels. But as soon as I saw it, I knew that this was a thing I wanted to try to recreate in Trailmakers. We have water, we have paddles, we have the ability to create mechanical me me mechanisms. And this wacky take on a paddle boat seems right up my alley for something to try to recreate. Now, th that's one of the things that makes it really difficult to search for where it came from is because it it's still a paddle boat you're just kind of like a bicycle paddle boat thing but that's not too far from how a normal paddle boat works so i'm just getting contaminated with the results of just regular boring old paddle boats but this one is not boring at all and i'm gonna see if i can make it work in trail makers so now as far as the mechanical part of this it's like essentially a walking paddle boat it walks through, I wouldn't say it walks on water, it like walks through water with the paddles. It doesn't seem like that complicated of a mechanism, it might just be a little bit interesting being confined to our 90 degree build grid like we are in this game. Now if you've been following the channel this year, you know I've tried much more complicated walking like mechanisms than this one. This one just adds the extra complexity of having to use water to propel itself. Alright, check it out. I think I'm doing fantastic so far. I have a floating slab. If the success of this is a sign of anything to come, I think this is gonna go wonderfully. All right, now on to actually creating the mechanism here. So by the looks of it, there's one main point of rotation that is the power is coming from the bicycle motion of the guy on the craft, but uh, we're not gonna be able to, we don't have like actual bicycle chains to link one rotation into another rotation into another rotation. Uh, so we're just gonna be powering each source rotation point on each set of legs. It's gonna make things a little bit simpler while still keeping the original spirit of the design. All right, so here it is. Step one, source of rotation. I can see the end already. We're almost there. All right, so now the interesting challenge with this is this has to be able to rotate a bar that is not gonna conflict with the craft itself. So it has to extend out past the edges of the craft. Otherwise, we're gonna run into some issues. And I think the best way to start is probably not in the water, but like the leg and its full frontwards extension on this side, at least. The other side is gonna have to be the opposite, the opposite part of the cycle. All right, so let me do a quick test here. Make sure there's not gonna be any collisions. It is close, but it looks like we have just enough. So now in order for the leg or the, um, the paddle to stay in the correct orientation as it does this, we have to make sure that we have a free floating rotation point. So this is gonna be uh, strength zero. So this is gonna have no impact or no power coming in from this point right here. And this is where I attach my paddle. So I could use the oar attaches pretty nicely, but I don't know if this gives us enough surface area practically speaking, compared to like this paddle is definitely wider. Let's start with the oar at first, just cause it attaches nicely and just see how it goes. But uh, let me see real quick. All right, maybe we should extend it in a little bit further into the water. <laughs> we're just, we're literally slapping the water. That actually looks kind of cool. That's a, it's a good water effect. All right, so this part, which I think is the more complex part of the mechanism is done. Now we just need to attach it back to a stationary anchor point that's gonna keep everything in line and give it this running motion. So originally I was thinking I was gonna have to put another uh, rotating servo up here, but I think I can use a hinge on zero strength because these things can go like up to 90 degrees and I don't think that they're bending, well, I guess 180 degrees if we're taking in both directions. And these are not bending that much. So I think this could work pretty well. All right, and then I'll add another one of these going right back to the anchor points. Zero strength on this as well. All right, and this anchors right back down here. So here's the moment of truth. This should, I think theoretically, this should give us everything we need. I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna work well. Let's find out. Okay. Uh, the dimensions are definitely a little off, but promising it's steering us to the left, which is exactly what we would want out of this. Um, but the dimensions are definitely a little off. I'm thinking it probably would have been better to build it starting with this position and having it be perpendicular to the water because when it's in its complete forward part of the rotation, it shouldn't really be perpendicular to the water. It should be kind of 
reaching out towards the front so let me try some adjustments and measurements here and see what kind of uh, impact it has but i'll save this just in case because it's it's kind of working already all right here we go here's the new version let's see how this feels in comparison ah yeah see that seems like it's much more symmetrical in how it's interacting with the water i don't know if it makes any difference when it comes to its effectiveness but at least it, as far as its visuals and aesthetics this looks really nice this is gonna be so cool I can't wait to see this in like full function. Okay, now the uh, the interesting part is gonna be to get the other one to be, to start off in the opposite position like this. And I think there is room for that. There's gonna be a little bit of asymmetry in how this is built, because I'm gonna need an extra servo. And this servo is just serving the purpose to rotate the entire thing 180 degrees. All right, now let's see if the game can successfully mirror this if I select all the appropriate parts. All right, ready? Hey, look at that. All right, check it out. Now when I spawn in, this additional servo right here should put this in the opposite position of the one on the other side. And that is looking like it's working. Except uh, they are going in literal opposite directions of each other. Hold on. Got to reverse controls on this one. All right, there we go. Yes. Yeah, wait, why? No, that is... All right, they are going into the water. This is a terrible oscillation, though. This is giving us... This is giving us some very bad rocking. All right, hold on. Let me calm down here. Oh, that is so bad. That is actually so bad. This thing is not stable right now in the water at all. All right, maybe if I give this thing, you know, kind of like a boat, like if I give it a little bit of a keel underneath. There we go. Now we got a nice keel underneath. Let's see how it feels. Definitely better. Our speed is not that great right now, but this one has twice the running power that I currently have on this. I need to add another one of these to this thing. I think I'm gonna have to move my seat a little bit farther back to make room for this. All right, copy and paste. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, let's see if this functions. Oh, oh did that add much? It actually did, it added like, whoa, that actually added almost, almost like 100% increase, which makes sense because we literally increased it by 100% of uh, water resistance, but I didn't expect it to- I, I thought it was gonna have diminishing returns, okay? <laughs> this is not bad. The only thing is, uh, we do not have steering, which would make it interesting if I could actually program steering into this, because- What about that? Oh, that is weird. That was not supposed to- wait, what? Why does- hold on a second here. Oh, hold on. There's a, there's a weirdness happening with this. I accidentally- yep, accidentally left the controls on the- on the wrong, uh, servo there. All right, now we should have a real backwards. There we go. Okay, so now, if I do this right, I can program steering into this, not with, like, a rudder like a normal boat would have, but by independently controlling the left and right sides, I could have them go forwards and backwards at the appropriate time to create steering, I hope. Let's see if I can figure this out. So in order to do this, I have to take away all of the normal inputs from these and use just logic for this. So I don't normally do this because I'm not that well versed in logic, but if you're interested in understanding how I'm doing this, I'm gonna try my best to explain this as simply as possible. So on each side here, I'm gonna have an OR gate and these are just gonna represent forwards and backwards. So this is right side forward, right side backwards. This is left side forwards, left side backwards. So to go forwards, I just give a positive input into these ones. And to go backwards, I give a negative input into these ones, just like that. And then the same thing on the other side. Positive input into the... Actually, no, negative, because it's reversed on this side. So I think negative input to go forward on this side. And then a positive input to go backwards on that side. So now these four logic gates are basically the representatives of these servos that need to spin in whatever direction they want to spin. So now I need to put my output logic gates. These are the logic gates that are going to be sending the signals to these first logic gates that I put down. And these are literally just going to be single output here. There's going to be forward, one logic gate for forward, one logic gate for backward, one logic gate for left, and one logic gate for right. All positive outputs. So W, S, A, and D. So now all I have to do is wire each one of these to the appropriate logic gate that controls that motion. So if I press W, that means I want both sides to go forward, which are these front two logic gates. If I want to go backwards, I want both sides to go backwards. But if I want to go to the right, that means I want the left side to go forwards and the right side to go backwards. And if I want to go left, that means I want the right side to go forward and the left side to go backwards. So now I think that's it. I think we have all the controls hooked up. I really hope 
I really hope I did this right. This is the first test. So here we go. Forward. Looking good so far. All right. Now let's go backwards. Still looking good so far. All right. But none of this is any different than what I was already capable of doing. Now for the moment of truth. Steering to the left. Here we go. Oh, yeah. There it is. So now one's going forward. One's going backwards. It's a little bit awkward in the uh, the timing of them. They're kind of giving this up and down uh, feel, this very bouncy feel to it, but it is working. And then now they do get like unaligned in a weird way. Like when you go forwards and backwards, it messes with their alignment. So you kind of have to like, I don't know. You can either just roll with it or they don't reset back to like a zero point when you're done with them. But. Now, if I'm pressing forward and left at the same time, I think one side should go and the other side should stop. Just like that. And if I want to steer more in place, I let go of forward and just press left. And now they're both kind of counteracting each other. So we steer in place. But yeah, now we have like complete control. I don't like this bouncing motion though. I mean, if you want to get rid of it, all you have to do is hold left or right for like half a second and then it'll kind of reset itself. All right, but you know what? This is missing one thing compared to the original, and that is uh, the paint scheme. Let's go ahead and color it. I mean, it's pretty much black. <laughs> oh, and hold on a second here. There's one thing I haven't tried, and that is to change. I can I can in increase the speed of these. These are only on speed one. Let's double up the speed. Let's see how much more speed we can get out of this. Oh, <laughs> wow. That actually doubled my speed. I was going like 10 kilometers an hour. Now I'm going 20. For I don't know. I keep expecting diminishing returns out of increasing the power, but we're getting like a one to one ratio here, which is pretty impressive. Now, this is going to make the bouncing feeling a little bit more awkward, isn't it? If they're kind of in sync with each other here. What happens if I try to steer? Actually, this is working pretty well so far. I'm surprised at how stable this thing goes. You know, I want to add another set. I want to quadruple this. All right, I've done it. I have doubled up the power. We now have a whole nother set of legs and back. So now we have eight legs and we go literally the same speed as with four legs. So this this is what I was expecting. <laughs> I mean, we've gained like one or two kilometers an hour of speed after doubling up the amount of force here. But I guess we also doubled up, not really doubled, but we've increased the amount of weight as well. And why are we, we seem to be going to the right, even though this should be kind of symmetrical. All right, let's go left a little bit. I mean, we still have pretty much full control and oh no, this is bad. It is really bad when they get off of uh, out of phase from each other. All right, now we're just all in sync with each other. <laughs> the syncopation is important, <laughs> really important. But look at this. We got tank steering on a boat. We can steer in place, no problem. We can do a 180, takes virtually no effort at all. Don't have to have any space. We can just literally turn in, spa in space like we were a tank turning on a dime, if you will. And there you have it, another piece of wacky engineering I came across on the internet, and uh, it turned out to be another wild success. If you guys happen to come across any other gems like this, uh, definitely let me know, because I'm always interested in these, these really weird things that are possible to do and recreate in video games like this. It's really awesome to see. It looks like it's literally running on water. It's amazing. All right, if you guys enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy some of the other recreations I've done on the channel, and you can find that right here on the end screen. Please click this right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrabman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.